The CEO bench exists to bring you people who are already to the top or people who are on their way to the top. If they're already on the top, what is it like? Do they have an experience to share with us? Are you struggling to get to the top? Do you want to be a CEO? Do you understand what it takes to get there? Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, is the one and only, the man of on the journey. He's been moving and still moving. Tony Otoa, welcome to the show. The CEO bench uh, is an interesting place to be in. Sure. Sometimes it gets hot, but sure. we have the AC in here. Uh, just so that if it comes hard, you say increase the AC so we can sweat a little bit or take away the sweat a little bit. Okay. But welcome to the show. And I want to start from a very personal note of um, knowing you. First sure. of all, who is the comrade Tony Otoa and uh, What's your story? Where do you come from? Who are you? What are you? I know it's a, it's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, will, I will change the script this time around. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. I am a certified hustler. I, uh, if I told you 15 years ago I was working in a kitchen, uh, you know, running dishes, washing dishes, and flipping burgers, and and and, and all of these things, you would you wouldn't believe that. Yeah. But also, um, I, I started off as a tanboy uh, on a truck, and I think it was something that really created a lot of value in terms of understanding the country because of the travels that we were doing. And then, of course, uh, I worked in a kitchen, you know, out of this country, washing dishes and flipping burgers and all of these things, and then decided to go back to school. Uh, I was a journalist as well prior to that. And then, of course, went back to school and uh, decided to study uh, law and international relations for my undergrad and master's. Interestingly, I've never used that on any single day. <laughs> so, um, so, 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 yeah. So then, of course, I get into um, um, a consultancy business, yeah. doing a lot of consultancy around the oil and gas sector and supporting a lot of businesses that want to come into Uganda, a lot of country risk analysis yeah. for the businesses. And then that's how I get sucked into a total uh, exploration and production where I start off as a public affairs manager and then uh, eventually take on another role of national content manager so two roles and I leave that again at a certain point in 2018 and uh, that's how I get also called into um, Stanbic so I am currently at Stanbic where I started off as a head of enterprise development and now uh, the CEO of one of the Stanbic holding subsidiaries, yeah. which is the Stanbic Business Incubator Limited. Wow. Yeah. Well, Tony, what a journey right there. And um, I want to take you back to that one more personal question about Tony Utoa. Mm -hmm. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question, I think, to answer. I am a typical Lao man from a route north yeah. in a place called Ogur. Mm -hmm. And where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agueng. Yeah. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically a Ugandan, only yeah. Ugandan, yeah. Uh, from Lira. I uh, pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest Lago yeah, yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah. you're down the south so, after Karuma, oh, I think I, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, now that you know, Tony Otoa is Ugandan. And of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful for me. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and he would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. 
so I enjoyed a lot of debate and you know a lot of indoor activities and that is I think what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today uh, public speaking the love for debates and 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 and, and, and really in a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff but besides that I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie I did not know what I wanted to be as a child as a child i never really knew what i wanted to be i think apart from being a pilot that my father was really instilling in me it wasn't really um, a clear cut path of, path of this is who i want to be and that was a journey that kept on happening all the time until recently i'll be honest with you wow and you see i always consider life to be a journey if anyone tells you that they know what they were when they were them, when they were five years old and that's who they are right now uh, um, you need to question them more because you see life is a journey and the process is what is or what defines us and what kind of creates who we become and you know through going through the life journeys the lessons the trials the the, the 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 success points those define our paths and I think in all honesty um, I, I, I will I will want to be vulnerable and say I am still defining my path the best way I can so would you say definitively that this is the point I realize this is who I want to be and what I want to be in life? At what point? Um, I wouldn't say I even still know what I, I, I mean. I wouldn't say I definitely know what I, I really, really, really want to be. Yeah. I'm still growing. And every day is a, a, a new understanding of myself. Yeah. I always say that when you reach that point of arrivism, thinking you know who you are, you have reached who the best you are, that is the point that you start dying. Life is a simultaneous journey of learning and learning and learning yourself, growing yourself, building yourself. That for me is a continuous journey. So I always say the Otoa of yesterday, no, the Otoa of today should be better than the Otoa of yesterday. So by doing that, that means that today I have to learn more. So it's wisdom upon wisdom upon wisdom. And the more wiser I become by the day, the better and more clarity I get for my life's purpose. Wow. Well, you are live on the CEO bench, live on Facebook, on Twitter, and of course on, 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 uh, on YouTube. Go to our studio, subscribe, and be part of the CEO bench family growing bigger and better. We want to dive into a more serious question with Mr. Toa right here in the studio. But first, I want to bring you straight to the next question that Mr. Toa is going to take in in our interview today. Mr. Toa is the... Chief Executive Officer of uh, Stanbic uh, Business Incubator Limited, a new section of Stanbic Bank, a new section of uh, Standard Group, I think. And of course, here in Uganda, dealing with business. And uh, he's on the CEO bench as a man who scored with 25 votes from you guys who watch the show. He received 15 votes from uh, the Ugandan in diaspora, saying we don't quite believe that we can invest at home because and many of them said they have sent money home and they have come and did not find a roof or a foundation dug or anything but have sent money so they have a very negative uh you know uh sort of like thoughts about business uh that can exist in uganda from when you send money from abroad to your people at home so they say i don't think i can invest in uganda i don't think home is is best for my investment because I'm always cheated. Mm. But here we are with Mr. Tony <coughs> Toa at Stanbic Bank. The stuff you're doing there, yeah. receive a lot of voting from there. And a lot of these people wanted to know how it's going. I have Mr. Javier Tine best in, um, in, uh, in, 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 in Sweden, I think in, in Denmark. These are guys who are looking forward to seeing you on the show. I have okay. Edwin in, in Germany. I've got a lot of people in Australia. Dennis in Australia. Mr. Toa is now here. Daniel Engole, the sole reverend in the U.S., your brother from another mother is finally here. I hope you will pray for him uh, when he leaves the show. And, of course, you out there. So your votes are already here, and we're going to dive into that uh, discussion right now. But first, Mr. Toa, yes, in today's rapidly very changing world, Learning to lead and design our organization to read the turbulence creatively is critical to our ability to make a positive impact uh, in our community, in what we do, in our work as a leader. Mm -hmm. This program is quite very important. We look at the people who are going to the top mm -hmm. as well as people who are already at the top. Mm -hmm. And our focus is on transformational change. 
we want to look at the implications for those individuals and what they do as well as their individual leadership abilities and capabilities how are they carrying themselves what are they doing how have they arrived in that space mm. but of course we're looking at that to be able to help people out there who are following the show to look at the organizational culture if you're already there as a leader as a ceo what is the culture in that place and as well as the structures that you put in place that if you leave tomorrow we can be able to measure your impact based on that and we often looked at quantifiable justifiable measurable metrics of a leader when a leader leaves that place can we quantify it is it there what are the metrics that you left in place and so this program combined that intellectual rigor together with a personal challenge with a lot of collaborative creative expressions along the way these are some of the things that the ceos like you people do where you've reached and i want to take you to the leadership question which is very simple on leadership first of all what is leadership by your understanding and by your your own definition mr toa you know from, from from the build up that you just gave there's a lot in in uh, but i'll just dive i wanted to break it down but there's but let me just dive into your question you know and it's okay for you to break it down as well yeah uh, uh, because you know you, you've talked about crisis transformation leadership and all of these things but let me just go into leadership as a starting point everything begins and ends with leadership i don't know if you know true leaders are people who are needed in good times and bad times leaders are people who create good times in bad times leaders are people who steer society organizations people in bad times and good times but what's really also key for you to really put into perspective and understand eddie is leaders arise or rise during times of crisis and, and, and again now that's now going back to trying to unpack your yes your very big catalog <laughs> you see yeah if you think about uh, let's just go to the bible as a point of reference and think about how many leaders came out of the bible in times of crisis from Solomon to David to Daniel, you know, in the in the lion's Samuel. den, to Joseph, to they never came out in good times. They came out in times of crisis when they were needed, like so Moses and all these guys. Scratch the Bible. Let's just look at society today. Most revolutionaries or, or leaders who have transformed society have come in to take care of the issues of the time, the crisis of the time. Now, average people run away during times of crisis. They go and hide. Right now, we're facing a global pandemic. It's a crisis. How many businesses are making it today in the crisis? There are some businesses that are making it today, but it's because of identifying the leadership opportunities in that. So in times of crisis, a lot of people run away. Some people really stay. In terms of transformational leadership, that is now where you start asking the bigger questions of, what does it take to move a company from this point to that point? What are some of the critical decisions that you as a leader, decisions you have to make to make sure that your business stays afloat, your community stays afloat, your society stays organized in such a time. And a lot of the time, these decisions are not the best decisions. We are going to probably go into another lockdown. And this one might be even a crazier lockdown, considering the number of cases that we have when it comes to COVID. And the president, as a leader, is stuck with the question of the economy is starting to get back after the first bout. Should I let it go? Should I? But he has. Everyone is looking up to him. You understand? <laughs> yeah. 40 plus million people yeah. are looking up to that one individual. Yeah. Now, that is where leadership really comes out. So you can either choose to run away or stay in. Now just go back to excellence. And that's when our leadership and excellence comes into play. Because you see, excellent organizations, excellent people, excellent societies, excellent individuals always have leadership at the core. Yeah. Excellent leaders or excellent people provide solutions. Average people yeah. find problems or see problems. Yeah. And when you talk about transformational leadership, it's really leadership of changing mindsets changing communities changing attitudes changing paradigms changing the way we do and see things and it all starts with the vision 
of the leader, which begins, of course, in here, and then manifests through here, and then through the actions. When your followers or your people start seeing that, they resonate. Because now you are displaying at an attitude of conviction. Conviction is what people will see and get attracted to you because you start inspiring them. A leader in a situation like we're facing today is one who sees what's happening and says, we have to do something about it. And however much you sway him with money, all of these things, he is stuck on the pursuit to make a difference by changing that. People see that. Let me just give a simple example of that conviction. You remember what we used to, you know, we used to study a lot of funny things in school. <laughs> huh? Prairie, Saskatchewan, yes. Alberta, yes. uh, St. Lawrence, Seaway. But do you remember studying about uh, Alexander the Great? Yes. The man who oh, conquered yes. almost half of the world. Oh, yes. The man who named cities after his horse, yes. after his name. The man believed to have translated the book called the Bible from Greek to the language we have Can today. Can you imagine? Yes. He died at around the age of, he wasn't about 40, but he was just about there. Very young. Died yeah. while on his pursuit of, 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 of all this glory in India. Do you talk about him a lot today? Not very much. I will give you context. Let me put in now Jesus. Jesus died at the age of 33. He was very despised at the time. In fact, when he was crucifying, it was a whole event. He had very few followers. 2,000 years today. Do you talk about Jesus more or you talk about Alexander the Great? Obviously, Jesus you know never why? been of, and you know why? by anyone. You know why? His vision, his conviction, his inspiration and attitude, and all of that managed to motivate and inspire people to follow him. And I also end this by saying leadership is not about creating buildings and, 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 and creating all these earthly things. Leadership is about people. If you want to build the craziest foundation in an organization, in anything you do, people should be number one. Because people are what extend your legacy. You talked about when you leave um, um, uh, office or whatever, how do people remember you? People will never remember you for building a building. That building, if an earthquake happened, will go down into rubble. But people, people will transfer that legacy and say, there was this man, there was this leader who moved us from here to there. That is leadership. Abraham Lincoln, all these great people in America that we keep talking about, they never built buildings or anything. But they worked people. So leadership is about people. Wow. Mr. Tony Toa is definitely on fire. And if you have a question, please drop it there. Kisses and disses are all welcome. Tony Toa, before I lose the train of thought, of course. So are you a leader? And what kind of a leader are you? Everyone is a leader. A sweeper is a leader in their gifting. You're a leader in your gifting. I'm a leader in my gifting. Leadership is not about people. It's not about having followers. <laughs> Leadership is about pursuing the best in your gifting to lead, to champion, to be the best. A sweeper. The fact that they haven't actually come, but they are really good at their sweeping, you will notice they are not around. And you will never be as good as them because they are leaders in that. A lawyer. There are so many. But what's, what, what, you're an athlete. What creates an elite athlete or what separates an elite athlete from the others? Discipline and commitment and um, a lot of personal commitment to what and you said. that is on. where leadership starts. Usain Bolt is a leader in his field. You know, I hear people talk about all these basketballers and whatever. They're leaders in their field, but it's because also of the time and discipline the put in managing that craft. Mr. Cho, we're going to take one more question before we go for a break. And that question would be, anyone can steer the ship, but it will always take a leader to chart the course. When MV Templar crashed in Lake Victoria, mm -hmm. a story is told of how the captain said, I can't do this anymore, balance the boat. 
and the owner of the boat may so rest in peace said no this is the biggest catch we have i can't allow this to happen and the wife said the captain is just being jealous because we've had the biggest catch today let me go in there and steer the ship mm -hmm. and indeed he was in and he piloted and the thing crashed so the learning from there is that anyone can steer the ship it will take a, a leader to chart the course that said mr toa what is your understanding of leadership at the personal level family level society corporation and the national level briefly i think leadership is really a, it's a compass it's what defines what we do how we do and why we do what we do you see it's like a ship you just talked about a ship a ship without a compass in an ocean or in a lake will go anywhere it has no sense of direction no timing of where it's going and when it will get there or whatever leadership begins as a personal thing the reason why we have a society that is getting messed up with so many things happening and we're seeing corruption happening is because leadership is failing from a personal level you are corrupt as an individual and you pride in it because you are gaining more you go home your children are seeing that and thinking that is the way of life community and society is saying this guy is a good guy he's a rich guy he's the man of society and society is now beginning to agree to that being a norm that's now where the problem starts so let's just go back to your question leadership begins from your personal compass your true north why are you on earth what's your purpose when you walk out of here, how do people imp how do you impact on people? Or how do you want people to remember you? You know, nowadays people are dying and all people can say is, you know, we had a good time with that guy, Twali Nayet Gatuchikuba. But beyond that, what next? And then you hand, you find the same people coming to bury you, then after that they even actually have a drink up after that and life goes on. You'll never be remembered. But just think about this, and let me just give you a simple example of uh, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa was a four-foot lady, very short lady. She was a teacher. You know, people think teachers have no impact. She was a teacher. On her way to school to teach, she was so disturbed by the number of young children who were hungry on the streets, having no sense of direction. One day, she just woke up, went to the principal and said, you know what? Kalas, I'm done. I am going to feed the children of the world. The principal laughed. He said, you, small woman, you, what, first of all, what money do you have? You think feeding the world is? But when you think of Mother Teresa today, who do you think of? The woman who tried to feed the world. Her mission still exists way beyond her. Going back to the same principle of people. People and purpose. And you see, purpose cannot be from outside or without. You know, you don't tell me that this is your purpose or Torah. No, it comes from within. within. And you know, leaders are very crazy people. Yeah? You know, it's the same survey. They read a newspaper, they got pissed off and, and, and went and, you know, <laughs> on the streets and went and joined the bush. Yeah. They talk about uh, people like Fidel Castro and all these people. who Leaders are people who just get angry with what is happening and make a commitment to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Mother Teresa did that. Martin Luther King did that. Think about any leader who is prominent in society, the Michael Malcolm X and whatever. You forego your comfort zone to make a difference. And you know what's so interesting? Some of these guys even forewent their families. Look at Mandela. Fighting a cause with children who are as young as, I don't know, just to say, I am committed to this journey, which I know if I do the bit I can do, it will create a difference for my society. That is leadership. That is where you start from. And that is where you start creating impactful change. Wow. Well, it is said that he who doesn't understand the direction of leadership is just taking a walk, a long walk in the park by himself. And if you don't have people, then you do not know where you're going. But leadership at the personal level is very key. And you can see the passion with which Mr. Otoro is speaking. Definitely, it's coming from far. It springs from far. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, the CEO bench will dive into the next step of Mr. Otoro's journey. Change management from total EP 
to being a journalist at New Vision at some time or monitor and to being a kitchen man, to being a, you know, a tan boy running around the country and to saying, hey, let me show up in Harvard and try and do something and then coming back as a lawyer as well as as a man with an understanding of oil and gas. What a journey. How do you transform yourself? How do you move from that area? We'll be right back after the break. This is the CEO Bench. My name is Dr. Jinpo Oloo. Uh, thank you for watching House of Talent television. I love to inspire people. I love to talk about my experiences and how uh, God has been able to use me in the different exposures. And through the leadership, through change management and transformation, I've been able to do a couple of things in my life. Now, are you a kind of person who is tired of your status quo? Do you want your situation to change? Are you tired of what is going on in your life? You know, change is a fact of life. We've all been through experiences in the last couple of months that have taken us to a place where we need to do something about our lives. We need to change whatever is going on. So if you have not piled up investment for yourself, you need to do that. If you've not done businesses to hold your family in future, you need to do that. Are you thinking of full-time employment? You need to be thinking about your life after employment or your business in the next couple of years. So if you want us to chat, if you want us to talk about this, please get in touch with us uh, at SIL Uganda on number 07, uh, 0772443085 or check our website www.siluganda.com or on all the social media handles. You can hook me up or Facebook, that is Jinpo or Lowo, on uh, Instagram, Jinpo or Lowo, and uh, on uh, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Then we can chat a way forward with you. We can help you, we can coach you, we can uh, walk with you this journey of financial freedom. Thank you. Welcome back. This is the CEO Bench. My name is Eddie Okela and in the studio is the CEO of Stanbic Bank or Stanbic Business Incubator Limited. It, we're still struggling to get out of that yeah, new year. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that there's a divorce. Uh, not a divorce. I don't know that no, it's a divorce. It's, divorce. it's um, there is an expansion, you know, yeah, when your yeah. family gets, when your children start getting bigger, you, yeah. are, you also allow them to start up their families. <laughs> so it is uh, an expansion. Yes. 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 All right. But welcome back to the show, Mr. Tom. Yeah, Mr. Tom, before we went for a break, we were tackling the question of leadership. And I want to take you to the next question of, of course, change management. And then I will bring you back to what are some of the things that excite you as a CEO? First of all, what is it like being a CEO now that you are on top? I think it's uh, everyone has their own uh, journey. I'll, I'll speak about mine. Mine is uh, it's a very interesting learning curve, one that is all about continuous learning. Uh, you get to learn that uh, uh, things are done differently, but also you also get to learn that people are different in many ways. But the beauty about that as well is that you get to appreciate the, the, the diversity and try and work with that to make um, things happen in your area. Um, but for me, I think it's a very, it's a very interesting journey. Um, 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 and, and the reason I'm calling it a journey is because it's still a process. Mm. It's always, like I said, 
uh, uh, suicide for you to say you have arrived and, and assume you are the pinnacle. Yeah. Leadership or such situations are all about growing and learning and making yourself better. So I think for me, it's a very interesting one. Uh, so something that I keep, I mean, every day is a learning day. Every day I learn something new. Every day I meet different people, new ideas. And it, it, it provokes my mind to also go back and challenge myself. But it also gives me an opportunity to want to be better if I have to serve better. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I want to serve better, if I want to be meaningful, if I want to create value for my organization, my people, I have to better myself first. So it's kind of like a teacup. I mean, a, a tea. You know, I mean, a cup, rather. If it's half empty, you can't give so many other people a sip. Mm -hmm. But if it's very full and it's overflowing, you can give as many people to sip. So my job is to make sure that this cup is full of value as much as it can. And I think for me in my journey, this is what I strive for every day. It's a very interesting learning curve. Wow. Mr. Toa, change is not easy. Mm -hmm. And many people struggle with change. Yeah. Many people don't know how to manage it. In fact, we have seen situations where people don't want to leave yeah because they don't know how to deal with where they have come from when they uh -huh. decide to go back and you have been a man on the journey the ceo bench pretty much focused on the change management and how it is done and i want to just give you a perspective here which is the response to external influences mm. always causes the person to move mm. where modifying day-to-day -day actions achieve to achieve desired you know results causes the person to move or other people to come in and transformation is about identifying or motiv mod modifying the core beliefs mm. as well as the long-term you know behaviors of that person those are totally two different things but sometimes pro in profound ways to achieve desired results your journey has been one hell of a journey to say the least you've been to too many places mm. How would you say you've been able to manage the change? Others don't find it very easy. Why are you not stuck? The only two things in the world that never, that are constant rather, yeah. two things in the world are time mm -hmm. and change. change. I'll repeat that. The only two things in the world that are constant <laughs> are time and change. change. And because they're a constant, we do not have so much control of them. I can't stop the time. I wish I could. I am an older guy than the guy who came into the studio 30 minutes ago. I can't stop time. I can't stop change. But what I can do is control them. And how do you do that? By planning. Can I repeat that? Please do. Time and change are the two constants that you can never do away with. In fact, I want you to repeat it a third time looking direct into the camera because some guy might be confused. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so there are two things that I know for sure you can't do anything about, and that is time and change. And the reason why you can't do much about them is because they are constants. So the only way you can actually deal with them is managing them. And how you can manage them is by planning. And that's why planning becomes a very essential thing in our lives. I was speaking with my mentor yesterday, who, uh, Agase Kalala, who was telling me in business planning for his markets, he has to plan 18 months ahead. So what you are eating today was actually planned 18 months before. How many of us think that way? How many of us plan for the next month, the next week, the next situation? We're in a crisis. But how many of us have been planning on saving? We're in a crisis. How many of us have been planning or putting aside something in a granary? You know, it's very interesting how our forefathers were very interested in planning and saving. We had granaries. There was hardly famine in our time. The only famine that came in was a result of climate. But where seasons were great, we had granaries around houses. In Lango, a typical Lango traditional house had to have about, you know, three other small huts, you know, for the other women. And each hut had two or three granaries. Why is it that today, in 2021, we have 
situations where people are going hungry. It's planning. It's planning because I cannot control the weather. I can try now with irrigation, but I can't control the weather. So it's really about planning. And I think as individuals, as businesses, as entities, it's important to always forecast. The word forecast is also very interesting. Yeah. Forecast, to plan ahead. You remember those days on UBC, <laughs> they would give us weather forecasts and say tomorrow is going to rain and you walk and you think, it's important. Yes. So, so all of these things are very important, even in leadership or in terms of planning for change. In my organization, we never thought COVID was going to happen. We never. Last year, we never. Then COVID happened. We were training businesses in classroom settings. We had to transform that. Meaning we pivoted. We had to change quickly with the times. But on top of changing quickly with the times, we say now planning ahead for if this happens again, what do we do? So when now people are talking of a possible lockdown, we've already gone back to online mode. And you know what? We're killing it. You know why? Because we planned. We invested in systems and technology that can make sure that our services provided simultaneously and seamlessly is planning because guys change will never stop i can't stop my hair from growing gray i mean i can go and buy a canter <laughs> but uh, 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 the ladies might not like it maybe they like prefer it like this you know yeah. but you see it's important for us to understand that it's crucial for us to plan and if you want to manage change or change management it's important to plan if I want to be better than the Otoa today, I start planning. And if I'm to plan to be the better Otoa than I was today, what do I do? I will read more. I will invest more in what I am uh, spending my time on. I will invest more on the kind of friendships and uh, networks I'm creating. Because that is part of the process of planning. And that's why you see organizations will always have a strategic plan. What is your strategic plan? And it's not just a one-month plan. Also. It's a five-year, ten-year plan. Someone says, I am investing for the 20 years of this business's growth. Planning. And that is how you manage change. So change is going to be a constant. And we can sit back, lament, and wait for things to happen in a good way. Or we can actually say, how about we transform our businesses, ourselves, personally, our communities, societies, to start getting ready for this eventuality which could possibly happen so planning wow mr toa so the change from being a town boy yes. to the kitchen man yes. to you know a journalist to total and now to where you are yes. if you were to take us through if i'm stuck yeah. in my job and i'm yeah. watching you from my desk yeah. and i don't know exactly what to do many people are stuck in that place yeah. what would you say to them what is your understanding of change and how it is managed from a personal point of view? I'll be very honest with you. Mine was a crazy learning curve and I will speak about my story. Yeah. Um, I, I, I became very religious at some point. <laughs> I was in fact uh, 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 part of uh, the, the choir in church and all of that and I gave us a camera guy in yes. church and all of that. But I'll be honest with you. You know the mind, and if you saw my tweet today, the mind is a very powerful thing. You can choose to make a difference based on how you choose to control your mind. I always say you can change how you look, you can change how you or where you stay, you can change your clothes, you can change your friends. But any, as long as your mind or your mindset it's is stuck. stuck, all of that is just, it's, it's outside, it's a facade. You're going to still come back to the same point. So you need to understand that it's important for you to learn how to dominate and control your mind and move it into the positive vibes that will move you from point A to point B. When I was working in a kitchen in Croydon, you know my biggest admiration? To have a job where I wore a suit and a tie. You won't believe, that was my admiration. In Croydon, in the UK, I was illegal. I knew the difference between a police siren and an ambulance. Like I, need, I knew when to run and when to chill. You understand? Yes. But my desire because i dropped out of school was to one day have a job today i despise a suit and a tie yeah that's what i'm supposed to be wearing every day i despise a suit and a tie 
if you know me, Eddie, and you know me very well, yes. I am in my khakis most of the time, Monday to Friday khakis and mismatched suits and all that stuff. That is me. But I'll be honest with you, it just begins with your mindset. Where you say, is this the best I can do for myself? Or is this the best I can serve the world? Because I always believe that it's about you in the sense that you say, I have this gift. We all have gifts, by the way. And it's just about discovering what these gifts are. We all have gifts. And saying, how do I serve this gift to the world? To be able to get noticed, number one. But also to feel like I'm pursuing my life's purpose and goal. A musician with a gift of music can choose to just sing uh, in their home and no one will know. But they can also choose to sing, go and look for a record company, record that beautiful gift, and then what we call multiplication, create multiple avenues for that gift to go out to the world and if possible push it out as much as you can by doing that you're adding value to yourself because people are getting to know you and you know an interesting thing about money money is attracted to value there's a reason why a diamond is priced at this amount of water or fuel or it's value and who creates that value who, who says these things are supposed to be like that we do so when you say, this is who I am, this is my gift, this is what I want to share with the world, that is how you are. Michael Jackson, it was his gift. And that gift made him very valuable. Quincy Jones, the gift. And it made him valuable. Now, people come to him as a consultant. You know what a consultant is? <laughs> a consultant by the is not a worker. He's a guy who just comes and tells you what to do. Yeah, to do. And then you do Things it. He doesn't do it. How to do it, yes. Sure. Yes. Do you know how much a consultant gets paid? Like some of these guys who come into Uganda today? Well, I get paid $50 per hour. You get $50 per hour? Sometimes $100 per hour. Some consultants get paid $5,000 per hour, my yes. brother. So yeah. what you will earn in a year, a consultant will earn in two weeks. Yes. And he will fly back to his country. You know why? He has mastered his gift. He has refined his gift. He has added value to that and become a valuable item. That people will just call him to speak for one hour and they pay him. Are we doing that as individuals? Are we lamenting? Are we going to jobs that we don't really like every day and just assume that that is who we are and that is where we are? I just want to pay rent for my children. I just child. want to pay rent for I my children. I just child. want to pay school fees for my How children. How long yes. will you be paying rent? <laughs> and remember that as we grow, yeah. these bills also increase. increase yeah. And also remember that everything becomes more expensive as we grow as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so it's important for us to reflect and say, we want to create value in ourselves for our community and serve ourselves to the world. By doing that, trust me, value comes. Mr. Toa, change is not an easy thing. Absolutely. And a lot of people struggle with it. Uh, I have the former executive director of KCC seated where you're seated there, Andrew Chitaka, and we're asking the same question. Mm -hmm. And he says, it was not an easy journey for me to transition from city hall after nine years to now being a man back on the street to do my own stuff. But I think I fully understood that I needed to move because if I don't move, it will find me. Mr. Toa, that said, on the CEO bench we want to know today, was there a time in your journey of change management before you arrived at Standard Bank and later on to the Standard Business Incubator Limited? that you were scared of making one step and how did you come out of it absolutely i'll be honest with you every single day there are so many things that scare me mm -hmm. like any human being yeah but i always say that every single day do two three two one or two things that really scare you you know the more you do them they stop being scary yeah. fear is here the uncertainty you know eddie if i told you that Okay, let me just give you a simple example. Remember when COVID had just started? Yeah. The anxiety and the fear. You don't even <laughs> want to even touch anything or even look at a guy because you're scared of COVID. Yes. yes. But you see, we have learned to live with it for one year. We have learned remedies along the year. We have also learned that it's important to vaccinate, to be able to survive, and so on and so forth. But more importantly is to understand that 
fear is the only thing that can stop you from either being great or being amazing. And you know the problem with fear a lot of the time is because of outside perceptions of people of what people will think. Oh, if I leave this CEO job, ha, and I'm on the street, people will say, oh, I'm such a you know, you understand the attitude? Yes. But you see, when you have created, like, back again to the idea of value, a job doesn't bother you because, you know, the moment you leave that, someone will be coming to snatch you off the street. That is change. But you begin with creating value for to yourself, yourself, to yourself. Wow. Well, we are on the CEO bench, and this is Mr. Toa, is the CEO of Stanbic Business Incubator Limited, the man who arrived on the top recently. And as you can see, he's added to greater things uh, from that experience. Mr. Toa, change management. The principle, the principle is always um, to apply when moving out. Are there any principles that you have applied while moving out from one place to the next? And how do you communicate that as well as, you know, manage where you are going? Most people leave the job because a new person has come. Mm. And they are no longer able to do what they used to do before. Mm. And they need to get out. Or some people say, I've outgrown this place and I have to move. And I'm going somewhere. So have you always communicated this? If if, yes, how do you communicate? I'll it? be very honest with you. The, the biggest mistake any human being can make is yeah. burning bridges. Always leave your workplace in a state where people don't want you to leave. That if you left, they're like, oh my <laughs> God, we need to have this guy back. You don't want to leave a place and say, I'm, I'm handing in my resignation. The guy says, oh, <laughs> thank God. You understand? Yeah. But again, that just comes back into the issue of value. <laughs> How much value? Because you see, when you create yeah. value to yourself, yeah. your company feels it because you're also creating value for the company. Yes. You get it? Yeah. If I'm a camera guy and I'm learning more techniques on how to film, for instance, yeah. and then I tell Eddie I'm leaving today, uh -huh. you will want me to stay. You want, you, you, I'll be different from a guy who you call and I, and I come in, you know, not sober and I'm trying to do my job and I can't actually do it well because that's the kind of person you want to go. All of my, all of my um, apologies for that. All of my um, uh, jobs that I have done before, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I'm working with them today. I'm working with Total, with the Olaga Space. I'm working with Accord. I'm working with all of these guys. And interestingly, I have actually come back in a better position of, again, a mini consultant, a person who's coming to create value for them. Not in a situation where they're telling me to move on. You. We don't have to deal with this guy anymore. So it's very important for you to understand that yeah. legacy should be part of your journey in any place you are in. Be it society, be it organization, be it community. We live in very many um, uh, places or societies where it's communal, you know? But you know when you leave as a neighbor and people say, We are happy here. We are happy here's left. Yeah means you haven't created value and you will go to the next community or next place and still be the same because you haven't mastered the art from within to create that value that makes people want to be attracted to you and create value for your community society job or any place i think that's what's really crucial Eric. well the ceo bench is going to take a break and when we come back mr toa will dive into transformation how do you create transformation first of all what is transformation what is the understanding of transformation is he transforming the places that he has been to has he transformed the places he was before and is he transforming the places in right now and um, are there some quantifiable justifiable measurable metrics that we can follow as a man on the top we'll be right back after the break this is the CEO bench. Your kisses and this is all welcome. Please don't throw a stone because you might be in a glass house. <laughs> My name is Dr. Jinpo Oloa. Uh, thank you for watching House of Talent television. I love to inspire people. I love to talk about my experiences and how uh, God has been able to use me in the different exposures. 
And through the leadership, through change management and transformation, I've been able to do a couple of things in my life. Now, are you a kind of person who is tired of your status quo? Do you want your situation to change? Are you tired of what is going on in your life? You know, change is a fact of life. We've all been through experiences in the last couple of months that have taken us to a place where we need to do something about our lives. We need to change whatever is going on. So if you have not piled up investment for yourself, you need to do that. If you've not done businesses to hold your family in future, you need to do that. Are you thinking of full-time employment? You need to be thinking about your life after employment or your business in the next couple of years. So if you want us to chat, if you want us to talk about this, please get in touch with us uh, at SIL Uganda on number 07, uh, 0772-443085 or check our website www.siluganda.com or on all the social media handles. You can hook me up on Facebook, that is Jinpo or Lowo, on uh, Instagram, Jinpo or Lowo, and uh, on uh, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Then we can chat a way forward with you. We can help you. We can coach you. We can uh, walk with you this journey of financial freedom. <music>it is the CEO bench my name is Eddie Okela in the studio is Mr. Tony Okawotoa the CEO of Stanbic Business Incubator Limited the man on the top and of course he's still rising and uh, we're sharing the idea of personal leadership what does it take for you to lead yourself to move forward some people don't even know how to start or where to be and he's talking about change management. How do you manage change when you're moving from one job to the next and to the next? What happened? Do you burn the bridges like Tony was saying? No, because we're seeing a typical scenario where he's back in that place, even earning better than his, his salary was before. So how do you get to that point? It's something that we're talking about on the CEO bench. And of course, this part of the show is about transformation. Mr. Tony Otoa, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. Transformational change is a process that we designed. For us here at the CEO bench, we understand that one, you must design to create a significant change in the culture and work processes of an organization. And the procedure significantly improve in performance if you go there. What does transformation change mean to you at Stanbic Bank as the CEO? Or as Stanbic Incubator Business, rather? I think it has, uh, it has very many facets, very many ways of looking at it. But I think for me, personally, transformation, transformational leadership is really about not just, not just about the whole organization, but it's, it goes back to the individual. Yeah, first. Because it has to start with the individual, and then eventually you start seeing it having a ripple effect on all the people around and you know the, the your stakeholders the people that you you also engage with uh, but also uh, transformational leadership in so much of a way is one that um you know to transform it takes a lot it's a lot of learning and unlearning assuming that things are like this and should be like this because they were like this is the wrong way to actually make your move you have to understand that so many things transforming are changing we have gone through this crisis of COVID where people have learned that the digitization world or digital processes are very important in leadership for instance you know, leaders now have to go through that if you want to transform as a leader you have to also now take on board zooms and and, and, and team meetings and all of these you know you have to get used to can you see my presentation can, can you mute please and all of this you have to yeah. and you know these are things that were not very common two years ago but transformational leadership for me is really about understanding that everything seems to be changing and how do you as an individual as a leader work with that to be the ideal leader in that transformed environment you can choose to be a guy who's not moving, you're static in one place, or you can choose to be a guy who is developing faster to be able to deal with those changes. I was reading a very interesting uh, book 
um, it's really focusing on very much around crisis and leadership and change. Yes. And the writer goes on to say that it's very important for a leader who is going to survive and be magnificent to understand that it's important to plan for the bends and the corners that you do not see. Assuming just because you're on a straight road that everything is going to be straight is the worst a leader can think or assume. So you're supposed to imagine that at some 10 points, there are going to be changes. There are going to be bends. Pitfalls. Pitfalls. Look at Nokia as a company. When the CEO of Nokia was speaking at a conference where they had made losses and so on and so forth and they were kind of closing shop, he said, the only, we, he said, we actually did nothing wrong. The only thing that we did was we did nothing. Nokia was the number one company. <laughs> Boss, I had my small Nokia phone yeah, and I remember just to be on my belt. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Where is Nokia today? Yeah. The likes of Samsung, uh, my, uh, Motorola came in and stole that market and kept on changing and doing things different. The iPhone came in. It came in to make having a phone cooler, sexier, nicer, and whatever. Things that the uh, static leadership of Nokia did not see. Transformational leadership. Assuming now, for instance, that, oh, you know, um, uh, uh, some of these soft drinks that you see, the competition that's going on with so many soft drinks that are coming into place, some of these big names had not actually factored in the, 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 the truth that these small guys can actually come and take over your, your market. Yeah. Transformation leadership is about planning and preparing for those uncertain times. Knowing that at the end of this straight road, there's going to be a corner or a bend and you need to anticipate and plan for it. And that is again where I went back, where I go back to the idea of change. A constant. It will always happen. So what do you do when you're on the straight road? You start planning. Wow. You start planning. Mr. Toa, we define change, transformational leadership is something I speak very passionately about. And uh, my definition of transformational leadership is uh, a leadership approach to things that one causes change in an individual first and then goes along to cause change in the social systems that transform the lives of many people turning followers into leaders that's how we define it here but i want to take you to what is business transformation first of all we understand here as business transformation being a change of management of strategy which can be defined as any in any shift or as any shift realignment of things and of course procedures significant movement to things as well as the performance but you guys at Stanbic Bank or rather at Stanbic Business Incubator Limited what do you teach these people I think what's most important for us to understand is that uh, business is not, business is not really all about making money but it's about creating value in society and I think that's what we want to do. When you create value in society, the money eventually comes. Um, we are creating businesses that are going to have an impact on not just the nation, but on the communities and the people that they serve. That for me is transformational. It's not really about money. Let me tell you something. Yeah. <clears throat> the biggest mistake you can ever do is to seek success. That's the biggest mistake. If you just stopped at the point of, I am not going to seek success, but let me just create impact and value, success eventually comes. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you see, you made success your goal that you're failing to enjoy the process and what it takes <laughs> to really get there. Yeah. And you're struggling to get there. Yeah. But when you engulf the process and you create about the value of people bettering yourself, value 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 success just comes and trust me back to the area of value or money attached to value success is inevitable success is inevitable you see if you think about the Wright brothers for instance let me tell you a simple story the white the Wright brothers wanted to transform the world of aviation transformation leadership in the world of aviation on the other hand, you had a scientist who was paid by the American government. He had journalists going around following him, influencers, what we call influencers today, following him 24-7.
he was paid by the military about 50,000 US dollars at the time. A lot of money today. At the same time that the Wright brothers were trying to fly a plane. His motivation? Success. His motivation? Making money. His motivation? Being famous. The Wright brothers, on the other hand, transformational leaders, was let us do something that will change the world of aviation. They never had the press or influencers. They never had the budgets that this other guy had. Never, in fact, what he said about them is that they used to move with spare parts almost 19 times a day. They would try to fly, they failed. They tried to fly, they failed. They tried to fly, they failed. Guess who flew first? Or who put the bird in the air? The right brothers. The right brothers. What happened to the other gentleman? He packed his bags and left. He, in fact, abandoned the project. <laughs> so you understand where I'm coming from when I talk about transformation. So this is what we want to tell businesses. It's not really about the money. And all. The money will come. But if you begin by bettering yourself as a business, adding value to yourself as a business, becoming impactful in your area of business, in your sector, the money is inevitable. Wow. Mr. Tony Toa, to somebody who is watching you out there, yeah. And is a business person and uh, or somebody who has been beaten flat living in america or in the uk have sent their money down here back home to try and you know start a business and things didn't work and they don't want to hear anymore what would you say to them before we dive into the next set of questions that winds up our meeting today first of all nothing is always clear i i, I lived away from home for uh, close to 11 years and it's just like you being here in Kampala and telling a guy to plant your seeds in Lira. It doesn't work like that. You have to be intentional. If you want to do business here, you have to be intentional. Make the time. If you want to do business in Uganda, we have now all these digital platforms that you can use. But most important of all, be intentional. Make the time. Come and see your investment. How many Indians and Muzungus do you see flying I mean, staying in their countries and saying we have sent money to Uganda, we are doing something. They come and spend time here. And the beauty is this is our home. So as Ugandans, we can actually do more for ourselves here. So I never understand why one would actually send money to do business here or to without actually coming and see where his money is going and where the investment is going. I know of several stories of people who've sent money to build houses. And the person who's building will take a picture of the neighbor's house and come and say, well, to do so one, to do so one. You understand? Yeah. You have to be intentional about yeah. your investment. Because you see, people in the diaspora work so hard for their money. It's hard earned. And for you to just send it and have someone play around with it, that is suicide. So it's important for you to understand that it's critical for you to come and look at your investment. If I want to plant uh, soya beans in Lira, I cannot just send money and say, uh, how many acres have you dug? Okay, uh, and then just go back after three months. And I have to go and make sure that while they're planting, how many seeds are they putting in? What's the spacing? How many, you understand? Yeah. And make sure that I, I'm following this process. And I've been a victim of the same. So I'm speaking from experience. So for you to really grow your business, understand what you want to do back home, be invested in it. Be intentional. Wow. Mr. Tony Otoa, we're diving into our last part of this interview. The CEO Bench is very grateful, first of all, to have you today. And uh, we want to run you through to a last set of questions, which okay. are pretty much directed to where you are right now as the CEO. And uh, our time is fast spent, but we'll run through this quickly. Number one. Who do you look up to for inspiration and inspiration or mentorship as Mr. Toa? Uh, Mr. Toa, I have several mentors, um, business mentors, and I have leadership mentors. I have uh, spiritual mentors. So my spiritual mentor, of course, is my parish priest in Umbuya. Uh, my business mentor is An uh, Agase Kalala. And uh, for my um, leadership uh, 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 mentorship, I, most of them are dead, actually. There are many, but they're dead. You know, people like uh, Che Guevara, people like Nelson Mandela, people like um, Miles Monroe. I mean, there are people who epitomize the discourse on leadership or what a true leader should be. So those are the people that I look forward to. Wow. Yeah. And uh, what is that one decision you wish you didn't make 
in your journey of change and transformation as, a, as an individual? I think, I wouldn't say I don't have any, but I would say... Um, that one decision, when you look back, you're like, I shouldn't have made this decision. Hmm. That one decision. I don't really have that one decision. I mean, I, 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 I always think that my decisions, whether good or bad, have been the reason that I am today who I am. You see, so it might have been bad at the time, but I think I learned from it to who I am today. So it's, it, it ends up being a good thing. So I can't really pinpoint, I won't lie, Eddie. I would be a liar <laughs> to tell you that uh, if, if, if you had prepared me a month ago, I think I would have gone through my life story and uh, come up with something. But for now... Yeah. You want to let that one go. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, how do you keep your team quite very motivated despite conflict and obstacles as a CEO? Make everyone be a leader in their own way. How do you do that? Work all in respect of each other. Work all in recognition of each other's strengths and weaknesses. But most important of all, always know that everyone has a play or part to play rather. Everyone, everyone. And the moment you do that, the moment you give people that ability, they will give you 100%. And Mr. Tony Otoa, the CEO bench would like to know, what are those most important attributes of successful leaders today that you follow, that you work in as I think, a CEO of Stanbic Business Incubator Limited? I think there are only two. Uh, one, people. They're people-oriented. Number one, people-oriented. Number two, they're always vulnerable, meaning that they are willing and seeking to learn every day. Two things. Vulnerability in the sense that you want to learn and become a better person. And number two, people, people, people. Wow. This interview is coming to an end and we decided that when you send your comment or kisses, we're definitely going to read and we're going to get back. I have already seen some people who sent questions today and I want to bring this question to you, Mr. Toa. One of them is, can you please ask Mr. Toa what excites him very much every day he wakes up in the morning he's always heightened he's like the sugar levels are always up what excites you somebody wants to know from france the fact that uh, i have another day given to me another day to make a difference that alone is exciting we're in a COVID time right now where some people are struggling to breathe to breathe just this air wave, this, just this oxygen they have to get onto <laughs> just the, i mean the fact yeah, that yeah. i can actually wake up and inhale and exhale yeah why wouldn't I be excited? It's another chance to be a better person than I was yesterday. And it's also another chance that God has given me saying, you, that's another chance for you. You go and run your day. That's what excites me. Wow. This question is coming from my brother from another mother who used to work at UTL. Bernard says, uh, could you please ask Mr. Tony Otoa during the CEO bench, what are you looking forward to in your new assignment as the CEO of Stanbic Business Incubator? And where would be your next step? I think I'm just looking forward to creating an impact and, uh, and creating value. And of course, I don't see myself staying there for a long time. I think there are better people with better ideas who can come and take over from me. You know, this whole idea of arrivalism where you assume it's your thing and you want to put, you hang your coat and assume the office is yours. No, I just want to do the best I can, create a lot of uh, impact and let someone else with more energy, more drive, more ideas yeah. come and take uh, take, take the play. It's always important as leaders to understand that the best thing you can ever leave your society, your community, is a successor. Wow. Mr. Eddie Okela, I want you to ask Tony Otoa when you finally have him to see your bench. Of course, 2020 was a difficult year. 2019 was a difficult year. Many people's, um, you know, businesses died and some closed shop. But could you ask Mr. Tony Otoa, what is the best thing that has happened to him this year, 2021, so far? And how is he managing from the man who speaks about business? I think it's the fact that uh, we've seen businesses come back to life. That is what has really excited me. But also the fact that um, new players have come on board. That is a good thing. You know, the fact that players have understood that in crisis lies opportunity. I'll tell you something interesting. 
In China or in Mandarin, there is no word called crisis. There's no crisis doesn't exist. Crisis is actually broken down in two words. It's I think Jiang Yu, which means danger, and then the other one I think is it begins with the W, meaning opportunity. So when people are shouting crisis, crisis, China man is saying opportunity, opportunity. <laughs> you understand? And yeah. so many businesses yeah. have seen that opportunity in this crisis, and I think that is the beauty about what has happened. Yeah. And it also gives us a level ground, you know, a level ground for people who are not known to also now get to be known. Yeah change of the status quo that's exciting wow and of course coming from you the last question to mr tony otawa is a question that comes from a gentleman based in the united kingdom he says what's the most important thing the viewers and the followers of the ceo bench who nominated you should be able to know about you mr tony otawa i'm one of the people who nominated you because i really wanted to have you you know share your story on the ceo bench this is your number 24th vote that came from the UK, coming from the one man called Dennis. What should they know about me? Yes. I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am a man of so many trends. I'm yeah. a hustler, like I said, a tad boy, DJ, news guy. Um, but I'm just a lover of life. I think the fact that we are living, the fact that we're able to be given a chance to live. I shouldn't say I shouldn't be a love of life. I am a love of life. Yeah. Wow. Mr. Tonatoa, our time is up. Thank you. And this is your last question. What are those five qualities of a good leader that you would like to leave us with today on the CEO bench? Okay, I think um, I won't really go into five. I'm just going to about, I think, three, which I think are very, very crucial. Key one, people-oriented. Like I said, vulnerable, always willing to learn. And number three, always listening. You see, the problem with us is that leadership has just been about speaking to the people. We've forgotten the tendencies of leadership, which is really about listening. True leaders listen. And that is where wisdom comes from. And that is how you know how to take care of your people and how to steer that ship, like you mentioned before. Well, the CEO bench has come to an end, Mr. Tony Otoa. Parting shot from you, and I'm going to put you on the spot. There are five leadership approaches that we have. One, transformational leadership approach. Mm -hmm. Two, autocratic leadership approach. Mm -hmm. And three, laissez-faire leadership approach. Four, we're looking at transactional leadership approach. And five is what we call um, a transformative leadership approach. Which one do you use? Pick three and tell us why as you close the show and you're parting short. You know, leadership is quite interesting. You need to actually pick and you, 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 you might need to pick from all of those <laughs> to really blend. But, I, but, I, but I'll be honest with you. Uh, the moment you start making leadership more of transactional or more of, um, you know, where people assume that for them to do a task, they have to suck up to you. That is already a failure in your leadership. It's very transformational. Very much people-oriented. Very much about growth. Why not laissez-faire? You said you can pick from a... Laissez-faire is not your kind of lead. I mean, you see, you see, you see let me tell you about laissez-faire. Yeah, yeah. And, I'll, and I'll end with this as the best example. When you see sheep, sheep are laissez-faire. There's no leader in there. Everyone is a leader. They're just they're all over the place. When it's about walking into a cliff, they all just follow that one sheep and they all fall into the cliff or the river. Yes. The lion, on the other hand, that's a lion. It's, transform it's a leader in the animal kingdom. It's transformational. And that's why you'll find that an army of sheep led by a lion will beat an army of lions led by a sheep. <laughs> well, that's a yeah. so let's be very honest about this thing and, and really understand that you need to understand where yeah. you lie and where you fall so yeah. it's very important for us to understand that uh, leadership has to be definitive you can't be less afraid it has to be definitive you have to be strong just like a lion you know when a lion uh, meets an elephant or a buffalo or whatever the buffalo and all these animals run away and yet by the way they are stronger than the lion they are heavier than the lion they are more intelligent than the lion they are taller than the lion they run away the lion because of its attitude, 
It's his lunch. That is a leader. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tony Trapp, thank you very much for coming to the CEO bench. And I want to ask you, so if you were elected the president of the Republic of Uganda today, what would be your first state of nation address now as you look into the camera and close the show? I think my first, my first state of the nation address would first of all to... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just close it down. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO bench has come to an end. And of course, thank you very much, Mr. Tony Trapp, for coming to the show. Thank you. And looking forward to having you to the show. I'm sorry, guys, we're going to bring the show to an end. But somebody says, can we have a round two of that gentleman coming to the show? Tony, <laughs> if there's a vote for you to come back to the show, would you come back? They Most want definitely. you to talk about the leadership more and the business. How do you incubate business from zero to something? Most definitely. All right. So we're going to structure that on the CEO bench. And of course, we'll ask Mr. Tony Otoa to come back to share that on the show. And let's, until next week, we want to say thank you very much for being a part of the CEO bench, growing bigger and better every single day. And of course, please subscribe and be part of the show. If you want to reach out to Mr. Tony Otoa, look out for him at the Stanbic uh, Business Incubator Limited. You will be inspired. Until next week, the CEO bench. It's a wrap from us here. Until then, Eddie Okila, Tony Toa, signing out.